there is often the division between art and culture, between culture and nature. This is the point where nature and culture meet, but meet on nature's terms. If, indeed, artists must make things in order to keep up with the things that society does to destroy, the pace of the destruction is staggering which means that artists must do a lot and fast. And, of course, being artists, they don't do things on command in general. <laughs> they have to think outside the box, inside the box, all around the box, in order to think of ways to respond that are effective and also within their range. And that we owe it to artists to shed light on all the resistances, on all of the points of misunderstanding. So I understand the political dimension of this, not so much as protest or as uh, manifesto-driven stuff, but rather an attempt to understand a problem of magnitude of which is truly almost beyond comprehension. Um, how do you make utopian art in a dystopian situation, if I want to call it that? Because I think to make art generally requires a certain kind of faith. I think it's a really interesting question about, uh, about how, what are we going to do? And what are we going to do as artists? Um, I think we're going to need to do away with all kinds of borders. Um, our practices have to be in direct service to Mother Earth at this point, and we owe a major debt of to all living systems. And our role as artists needs to be to mitigate the entropy that's created by our um, living patterns. We can at least help people to, to get aware of the fact that what we need is not just to change our attitude towards uh, water and natural elements. We have to change our perspective on ourselves, on our relation with the others, with the people we live with in, in our city or with the foreign people coming from other countries. What we are requested for is a total change of paradigm. Something. I mean, basically, all of this comes down to so the nation state is a unit of political organization, right? But you can't wish away the nation state, and as we've seen in recent anti immigrant sentiments and so on and so forth, the more threatened that nation state becomes, the more violent certain elements of it are. Yeah. But gradually, and we don't have much time, you can change the consciousness of what that unit is. And is it perhaps not now the beginning, uh, the period where we can speak more generally in those terms? of regions and systems and, and other organizational elements of the ecologies of societies and of the social growth, language growth, and so on, and to suspend the conversation about the nation state briefly so we can learn something we don't know. Um, my teacher, who will be speaking tomorrow, Newton Harrison, via uh, satellite, would talk about what's needed is for us to embrace the five great commons. And the last one that you're discussing um, is the comments of our collective stories. And the Mediterranean really is the home of those stories. And uh, at a certain point, I was also a bit terrified, thinking, oh, well, I have to rush away and I have to find a way to escape. <laughs> but, uh, um, but then uh, I, I'm, really, I'm really glad because this, I think, is what we actually need. And, uh, it is also referred to what I was saying before, that as scientific community, I think we completely uh, missed our, our duty to communicate our results, to communicate our, uh, our findings, which are, especially these related to climate, so important for the whole society, that we really need to, to interact with other communities in order to find a way to, uh, to, to learn to communicate stuff. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very glad and uh, I thank you for, for this event. Well, on that very high note, um, let me thank all the participants and in particular thank uh, Francesco Pietro Paolo, who is a Venetian, and Fong Boy, who is a Brooklynite, as am I. Thank you.